Anna Tutova, co-founder of Coins Telegram, and our guest, Harry Kalodna, co-founder of Blockchain Labs, the company behind Arbitrum uh, Layer 2 uh, Ethereum scaling solution. Great to have you here, Harry. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. So, kind of, we met with you like back in 2019. You have yeah. been for some time in the industry. Can you tell how did you get involved in crypto? Yeah, absolutely. I, I went to uh, grad school at Princeton in 29 in 2014 and i was lucky enough that my advisor was working on uh studying cryptocurrencies which i had sort of vaguely heard of but hadn't really done much with and basically got inspired from there started working on arbitrum as a research project um and i think uh 20, 2017 um made a research paper about it um and then got funding and actually built a com built out a company around it um so it's been i think like five years now yeah. <laughs> Quite a journey. Yeah. Uh, so, how, uh, why did you decide to exactly to work on the Ethereum scaling? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, if you if you believe in like blockchain tech, then like you have to then one, at some point adoption will reach the point where scaling is necessary. So, I mean, I think even then, and, and it wasn't it was originally my co-founder Ed's idea, and he actually thought of the idea in I think late 2014. Before Ethereum had even launched, oh, was it <laughs> yeah, when it was it was known. So I mean, he was like looking at the prototype, looking at the conversation, and I think even at that point, it was known that kind of scalability would be an issue and, and mm -hmm. an exciting one to solve. Yeah. So uh, can you explain to not technical people what Arbitrum is? <laughs> <laughs> I can do my best. Um, yeah. So Arbitrum is a layer two optimistic rollup. Um, and so what it means is basically, if you've heard of side chains and generally sort of you have Ethereum and then there are many other blockchains, most other blockchains have their own consensus mechanism, which means they have their own sets of validators, they have their own security separate from Ethereum. Arbitrum, in, by comparison, inherits its security from Ethereum. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can have a whole separate blockchain with, separate, with its own smart contracts, with its own users, with its own capacity, which is like the key thing and still derive its security from Ethereum, which means that it's sort of much more of an extension of Ethereum than it is a separate blockchain. Mm -hmm. And recently there, uh, you announced the news about buying Prismatic Labs, the company yeah. behind the uh, engineering team, uh, behind the uh, uh, transition of Ethereum to proof of stake. So yeah. can you tell about this move and why did you decide to acquire this company? Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, I should say they are, they are one of the teams. So they are a great team that does a lot of important work. Um, and you know we value what they do a ton, and they've built Prism, which is sort of the most used ETH2 execution client. But it's by no means the only time. There's a really vibrant ecosystem of different teams that are all building L1. I think for us, as a layer two, we just we depend on Ethereum's functioning so much, mm -hmm. um, and Ethereum has had this roll-up centric uh, future, um, this vision for a roll-up centric future ever since Vitalik posted about this a long time ago now. And I think that sort of they very much came to us and we are kind of when we came to them as sort of both being believers in this future. And they were looking for sort of what was exciting and, and looking how sort of L1 and L2 aren't totally separate, totally independent things. They're two systems that work together really closely and having them build together just makes so much sense. And uh, how are you different from uh, other uh, scaling solutions like Optimism or Polygon or some others? Absolutely, yeah. And there's there's a lot out there, and there's a lot of complexity. So <laughs> that's that's a that's a deep question. Um, I would say you know to start with for Polygon, Polygon you know is no is not one thing. They have their proof of stake chain, and then they have a number of zk rollups. Their proof of stake chain has independent validators, so it doesn't inherit security from Ethereum, like Arbitrum does. Um, they have a lot of cool ZK rollups, but those are all still on test net. Those aren't really production yet. Um, Optimism is a lot more similar to, uh, to what we're doing. They're also an optimistic rollup. Um, I think over the years, I think it's fair to say that their technology and our technology have become a lot more similar. Um, I think that, that they probably moved more towards us than we moved towards them, but we learned a lot from each other. Um, at this point, I think kind of the level of production readiness of our system and the ecosystem we have is probably the biggest differentiator to point to. Um, we have at this point sort of almost all the major Ethereum kind of projects deployed to us. We have tech that we have had fraud proofs running on mainnet for a long time now. Um, we have tech that's really sort of polished and ready for, uh, for prime time. Yeah, and as well recently you launched Arbitrum Nitro. Can you tell more what it is? And how yeah, it is? absolutely. Yeah, so, so Arbitrum Nitro, about two weeks after we launched Arbitrum 1, 
um, we started working on Arbitrum Nitro, which is basically a total rewrite of our tech stack. Uh, so I think when we launched Arbitrum 1, it was, it was huge, and we were really excited about it, but it came along with a lot of things that we knew were going to be issues long term. And so we immediately went into sort of a, a pretty from the ground rewrite, uh, where we now use, um, at its core, we, we use WebAssembly rather than a custom virtual machine, which means that we can evaluate things much faster. Um, overall, kind of latency times are down. We've introduced compression, which means that the costs of posting to Ethereum are now way lower. Um, which means that a lot of savings come in. And everything is just snappier and faster because we now are able to run with kind of using and building upon Geth, the core, Ethereum, the main Ethereum client, as kind of part of, and the core part of what kind of Arbitrum is now. Thank you. And what are your thoughts about Ethereum merge and how did things change for you after Ethereum transition to proof of stake? Yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, generally the just, the fact that the merge was something that had been worked on for, I don't even know how many years, like an incredible amount of number of years and an incredible amount of time and sort of by far the most complex thing I think that any blockchain has ever done. And just seeing how smoothly that went gives me a massive amount of hope for Ethereum's future. I think that the, the environmental impact of moving away from proof of work was is something to be incredibly excited about. I think that that was one of the big barriers. And like, you know, we got the question, is Arbitrum green? It's like, well, it's as green as Ethereum, but if Ethereum, so in Ethereum on proof of stake, kind of that then, you know, which was a big barrier to adoption that we saw um, is gone, which is, you know, really exciting. I think directly for us, it was kind of seamless. Like, I think it's like, it's very meaningful, but the nice thing was that Arbitrum users didn't even notice anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice. And as well, can you tell us uh, what use cases in crypto blockchain excite you the most? Uh, what projects do you consider to be the most useful? Oh. I, I don't even know if I could pick out any one. I think that like the, the core thing with me for Arbitrum is just how big and vibrant our ecosystem is. Um, like we have a website, um, portal.arbitrum.io, that just lists all the tons and tons of projects that are on Arbitrum. Um, and, and that really sort of, it's much more about like this huge community of people coming together and like having tons and tons of different builders than it is any one project. And do you plan to launch as well your own token? <laughs> it's not 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 something that we uh, that you know ever comment on. <laughs> Maybe in future, like optimist. And do you have like ecosystem fund or something like that for the projects uh, trying? To we we don't we don't currently. The, the one of the one of the really interesting things about the Arbitrum ecosystem is that we are one of the only f ecosystems that doesn't have a fund, which means that sort of all the all the activity on Arbitrum is organic. It's definitely a thing that like we've thought about, and like I wouldn't be shocked if we did one day, um, but at least so far we have not. Well, that's cool. That's uh, you have still quite a lot of projects in your ecosystem without any ecosystem fund. Yeah. And uh, do you invest now actively into any altcoins? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think I mostly uh, am pretty am too deep in the tech to really uh, to really do that anymore. I used to some, but uh, mm -hmm. these days it's it's all 100% uh, focus on Arbitrum. And how do you see generally the current state of market? <sighs> I mean, I think that like crypto has gone through a lot of these cycles. I think that it's important to sort of not focus too much on sort of what's today and to really sort of remember the bigger picture. Um, I think, you know, one of the benefits of having like started in crypto in 2014 is I've seen a lot of up and down, up and down. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, you know, I'm a strong believer in the fact that like long term is up and that these are just bumps in the road. Yeah. And can you share as well some upcoming plans for the development of Arbitrum? What's next for you? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we just, so we just released Nitro very recently. I think we're, we're doing a lot to sort of polish on top of Nitro. It also unlocked a lot of kind of possibilities for us just because it enhanced our Ethereum compatibility so much more. Um, so we're really sort of pressing on kind of the developer ecosystem, developer tooling, developer onboarding. We're really trying to just take advantage of the fact that our tech now is much more scalable, is much more efficient, mm -hmm. to really push for more adoption. Yeah, so wish you success in the development. <laughs> I hope to see you at the next conference. Thank you.